What is up, my squad of lights? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Destiny. In the last episode, we continued along with the Shadowkeep campaign, found all about these essences that are supposed to be giving us pieces of armor when fully unlocked and cleansed. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about them uh, in this episode. We got a cloak in the last episode, the first of... Well, apparently a whole set of armor pieces that we need to get before we're able to hunt down these nightmares that Eris has uh, been seeing that have come apparently from that pyramid ship that we encountered a few episodes ago. And today, we're going to be continuing this by heading towards the old Temple of Crota, which I don't even know if it's still called the Temple of Crota anymore. Crota's been dead for a very long time, so... Who really knows, but let's uh, start this thing. We got Eris, uh, this campaign mission right here. Eris used a hive talisman of her own to create the first piece of protective armor. To pass beyond the pyramids warding it. Anyways, <laughs> to pass beyond the pyramids warding and discover what lies within, you'll need to wear a full set of Dreambane armor, take the first step and hunt the nightmare of Omnigal. Here we go. Blind devotion is a dangerous thing. But when it came to Crota, Omnigal knew no other way. She raised for him an army of Hive and tore apart throngs of Guardians. Omnigal left much suffering in her wake. Suffering the Pyramid now uses against us. It expects us to fall to that which we have conquered. Not today. Alright, here we go. So... Take that guy out first. I'm going to use my heavy weapons on these yellow health bar enemies here. We have these Nightmare Acolytes that are just... They're basically the same as standard Acolytes. They just have significantly more health. So probably a good idea to use whatever heavy ammo I can on them. Uh, I happen to get another roll of this uh, machine gun from the Battle Pass. And I'm calling it the Battle Pass for the sake of transparency. The, the community term for it is just the Season Pass. But I'm calling it the Battle Pass because I feel like that's a little bit more befitting of what most people know it as. Um, it did give me a free machine gun along the way. And it's it's got one for all, just like my current machine gun. But it also had fourth times the charm. Which, personally, I like a, just a tiny bit more than Zen Moment because it allows me to... Uh, use ammo more efficiently. So I'm going to be running with bad juju and a sidearm, the full auto sidearm for the most of, the, uh, most of this whole run. The sidearm is going to do me very well in uh, close quarter spaces like what we're in right now. We'll get into some bigger rooms a little bit later. But none of this is really all that new. It's just slightly shifted. So I, I, I think we can immediately start to get into what I think are the worst criticisms of Shadowkeep. Of all of the post-Destiny uh, 2 vanilla expansions, Shadowkeep, I would have to say, has by and far the most recycled content. In fact, I would not I would go as far as to say it's the only uh, expansion that has uh, a, a, any large amount of recycled content. Like, there's a couple that use, like, recycled-looking weapons and pieces of gear and things like that. But as far as the actual locations, really this is the only one that kind of repeats itself. Even Forsaken wasn't doing this, and I think that's why Shadowkeep got a lot of criticism. That's not to say it's a bad location. I mean, the moon was always one of the strongest and most interesting locations in the first game. And I'm personally happy to see it back. I mean, the moon and Venus were my two favorite locations from the first game, without question. So I like it a lot. But I can also see uh, and totally sympathize with the argument that this expansion feels a little bit shallow. Especially because if you're getting into this game for the first time, the Shadowkeep expansion itself doesn't give you much. At least much that a new player would need immediately. I, I would actually say that this is probably the expansion that is the least... Well, maybe that's not necessarily true. I was going to say least worth your money. If you're trying to get into the end game of Destiny as fast as possible, then yes, Shadowkeep is the least valuable. Uh, Forsaken is even more valuable, at least for the Forsaken Ciphers, to get a few free exotics that'll help you later on. Uh, Shadowkeep doesn't give you anything of the sort, it just gives you story, at least for the time being, and then a raid. A raid that is, at least as far as loot goes, probably the worst raid in the game. Not as far as combat goes, though, it's actually a fantastic raid in that regard, so I guess if you want that experience, although it is very hard to get people who still want to run that raid these days, because it's a, it's a tricky one. It's a very mechanic-heavy raid that a lot of people tend to struggle with, so who knows, really? You, you never really know what you're going to get, uh, depending on the groups that you're able to find, because a lot of them are just, take one look at that raid and go, absolutely not, but 
Uh, I'm not going to, like, obviously burst this... Because this is still a good expansion. I'm not saying it's a bad expansion. I'm just saying out of the four post-vanilla expansions, so between Forsaken, Shadowkeep, Beyond Light, and Witch Queen, I think this one has the least compelling case for a new player to get into it. That's that's basically the extent of what I'm saying here. I'm not I'm not I'm not going to be criticizing it any more than that cuz I still personally like it. I like what it adds a lot. I like the moon lore. I like Eris as a character. I like fighting the hive. I think they're the still the most I mean a lot of a lot of people will say they're sick of the hive cuz they're basically the flood of destiny. I think they're way more interesting and I was very vindicated by how interesting I think the Hive is with a future expansion that we'll be getting into towards uh, the end here because, yeah, the Hive are cool. The Hive are really, really cool. I think they get a worse rap than they deserve because they've pretty much provided all of the best lore in the game. All right, Omnigol, Will of Crota, here we go. And I'm going to immediately, immediately hit her with a super. Now, I do believe she has a health threshold where she will go immune once it gets to a certain point, I think. No, oh, it, okay, yes, it does. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay, sorry about that cut. I nearly died there for a second. Uh, so all of the nightmares in this game, this is a good taster of how nightmares work. So all of the nightmares that you're going to be fighting in this campaign have basically the same mechanic at wherein you have to kill all of their yellow health bar helpers before you're able to deal damage to them once you've done a certain amount of damage. Although there are exceptions to this because there, and I've already got her in the second health phase, wow. Um, there are definitely exceptions to this that you're going to be coming into contact with later on. But do be aware that this is this tends to be how you're going to do this. And there's a lot of nightmares to discuss. Omnigol is, I think there's a total of, is it eight? I think there's a total of eight. So there's, there's a lot to go over with each of these. And, and there are some that have drastically different mechanics than others. They also very much ape the fights that you originally fought them in. Obviously, with Omnigal, you can only do so much because that was an entire strike in Destiny 1 that it gets mimicked in this game as well. For now, anyway. Did you retrieve any further essence? We did. This time unique to this nightmare. I see. Then we will uncover its secrets together. Until then, the Hive await you inside the Scarlet Keep. Let me know what you find within. Yes, ma'am. So we're going to be heading off to the Sanctuary and talking to Eris. We're going to see about these bounties and getting those done before we call this an episode. Shouldn't be too bad, depending on what bounties she has. Most of the moon bounties are pretty simple. There's exactly one kind of bounty that actually is a pain in the neck to complete, but I'm pretty sure we can avoid that one altogether because we only need to complete three, and I'm pretty sure she's going to have four on offer. Uh, it'll all make sense once we get there, but... Effectively, Shadowkeep is kind of the much grander, much longer version of the Dark Below from Destiny 1, and a much better version of the Dark Below as well, given that was the worst DLC in that game. So, begin. it's comparable, but I think this is kind of like the logical endpoint and what and the best possible conclusion for what was a very weak start. You've acquired further Nightmare Essences but are out of Hive Curios with which to create more Dreambane armor. After discovering the Hive's ability to shield themselves from the Nightmares, Eris learned of a dark power possessed by the Hive inside the Scarlet Keep. This power may be our answer to how they've protected themselves and our key to cre creating more Dreambane armor. Investigate the dark power within the Scarlet Keep. That is the next quest. The Strike, the Scarlet Keep must be done next. Okay, so... Let's uh, grab a few of these bounties here so that we can work on this essence really quickly. I'll grab a few of these because then we have more than enough to get this done. So, you know, I probably actually should just max out. I don't know why I stopped at three when I can grab at least two more. So let's just do that really quickly. And we'll just be working on these as we continue to go throughout the campaign. So let's take a look at all of our bounties here. A lot of these are very, very simple. So solar damage, easy. Orbs of power, easy. Auto rifle, easy. Submachine gun, Fallen in Archer's Line, we'll go do that right now. Power Weapon in Streaks of Three or More. Submachine Gun, again, that's just in Streaks of Two or More. You can do them simultaneously. Hand Cannon Kills and grabbing Helium Filaments. This is probably the hardest bounty to do if you don't actively have a Ghost Tracker set up to go and seek them out. If you do, they're actually pretty easy, but uh, you need to actually be willing to give up the Ghost Slot for that, which, I mean, if I go into my ghost really quickly here, I can show how this works really quickly, so let me, I'm actually going to get rid of the experience mod for a moment, 
and let's grab let's just grab the maximum resource detector so I can show how this works. So let's head out to Archer's line, and I'm actually gonna grab my submachine gun out so that we can do this. We'll go kill a bunch of fallen and just shoot them with the smig and We'll be able to complete all these bounties pretty easily, but once we head into Archer's line, you'll start to notice that helium filaments are going to pop up. So there's an icon right there almost immediately, like clockwork. You grab this, and you should be good to go. There, So there's one bounty in particular that Eris gives out. You have to understand, when Shadowkeep came out, it coincided with a... Uh, season that was very Vex focused and you're probably confused by that because this is a very Hive focused expansion therefore where the heck are Vex well if you see that little flash right there that just appeared occasionally there's a couple spots on in each of the locations on the moon where Vex will actually spawn and they're very rare it's a chance you never know when you're actually going to run into them she has a bounty where you need to complete finishers on like seven Vex, which might not sound like a lot until you realize that it's incredibly hard to track down Vex. This bounty was very easy to do the season that this expansion came out because there was also like a randomly spawning chance of like a boss fight against some Vex that would appear on the moon. But since then, it's become a lot harder to find the said Vex and they never depreciated the bounty. So that is like one of the most obnoxious ones to come across. It's probably the only bounty I would say straight up pass on when uh, Eris gives it to you. But aside from that, uh, the rest of the bounties in this uh, in the, on the moon are incredibly easy to do. This is actually one of my favorite places to go and complete bounties. Because like I said, or in fact, here's some Vex right here. Uh, they, it's, it's always a chance where they'll spawn. I think there's two spots on each in each location. So it's right here in Archer's Line, and then also down in the pit is another spot they'll spawn. In the Hellmouth, they will spawn kind of just right up in the freaking middle. I'll, I'll actually be willing. I'm going to show this off here soon, uh, possibly. But they'll kind of just spawn right up in the middle, and then they'll, if you remember the old sort of Crota mission from like way back in vanilla destiny one that first night you had to go and fight before you went into the temple of crota uh that first night spawn is where the vex will spawn now and then on anchor of light i believe there's a spot over in the back over by the fallen catch and there is another spot i think up at the top of the hill kind of right on the in the crossroads between the three sections of Anchor of Light, and they will not spawn in Sorrow's Harbor at all. So, if if any of that make that might not make sense just hearing it, but when I if you were to actually go to those locations and look at what I'm talking about, it would make a little bit more sense, I think. So let me go grab a few more helium filaments. I got some more smig kills to get, and once we get all of this done, I think we can turn these in, go get our new piece of armor, and call this an episode. So there's that. Oh man, if I could actually land my shots, that would be awesome. So let's see, what is our progress on this? So six more and uh, four more fallen kills. So yep, just six more basically, that's it. We shouldn't have too much of an issue doing this. Yeah, I when, I, when I'm trying to get my levels up, I try to at least once a week do a, a run on the moon. Yeah, so here's the other spot, the Vex spawn right here. Um, I try to at least once a week uh, come to the moon and take care of the bounties, especially because there is a specific weekly bounty that we have not yet unlocked that requires you to run through all of the lost sectors, at least the main three, the three that are not in Sorrow's Harbor. You run through all of those, you kill everything in those, and you can like do all your bounties as you go through the lo three lost sectors. Once you're done with all of those and the moon thing, and I'll, maybe I should show this off too. And uh, the moon thing, the the weekly bounty, you turn that in, then you take it to the Sorrows Harbor Lost Sector, where at the end there's a door you can open, and it gives you a free es a completed essence. It's not even one you have to do yourself. It's fully done, and you can just go turn it in for a piece of we for just a weapon. It almost I don't think it ever gives armor, so it's just kind of like a freebie. You can do all of that, including the bounty farming, in like 20 minutes. So it's super super simple to do. All right, let me show this guy here really quickly. This is a Trove Guardian. I'm gonna show this off really fast. So Trove Guardians. There is one possible spawn of Trove Guardians on each in each section of the map, and I'm trying to remember. I think it's yeah, it's right here. Uh, 
In each section of the map, you kill a Trove Guardian and a path opens up. Once uh, You have to hurry, though, because the path will disappear in, like, I want to say, like, uh, like 30 seconds. So we got to be kind of quick. Where the heck is that? Oh, there it is. Right over here. And you got to kind of remember the path. Otherwise, you won't get there in time. And at the very end is a treasure chest. Grab that. And you usually get a piece of legendary gear from that. That was a very quick way to farm levels back when Shadowkeep launched. Not so much anymore, obviously, because Shadowkeep is effectively at the uh, power floor now. But back then, that Trove Guardians was like one of the easiest ways to power to level up to the level cap before you had to start worrying about the power cap and the pinnacle cap. So I remember farming those guys, especially the one in the Anchor of Light, because it has the most straightforward and simple path to go across. Uh, and would do that all the freaking time. So let me turn in these bounties really quickly that I've done. Oh, I apparently am one fallen short, but don't worry, we'll get it in the future. And now, the essence has been cleansed, but cannot yet be transformed into a piece of Dreambane armor. Work with Eris to find a solution. And we will be continuing to do that in the next episode with the Scarlet Keep Strike. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Destiny very much, and I will see you all in the next one.